自测题 Instructions. You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all of your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the real test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1 of your booklet. Section 1 You and a friend are looking for a place to live. You have a list of places and go to see a rental agent to check on a number of points. Listen to the conversation between your friend and the rental agent and complete the list. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6 on the housing list. You will see there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, we've been looking over your listing of apartments for rent and we have a few questions about a couple of the apartments. Can you help us? Sure. Yep,、yeah, this is our most recent listing. What would you like to know? Well, we were first wondering about the house on Third Street. We can see that it is furnished and rents for $135 a week, but can you tell us how many bedrooms it has? Let's see. In addition to the den, it has three bedrooms. The rental on Third Street has three bedrooms. So, in the example, three bedrooms has been written down in the number of rooms column for 19 Third Street. Now, we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hi, we've been looking over your listing of apartments for rent and we have a few questions about a couple of the apartments. Can you help us? Sure. Yep,、yeah, this is our most recent listing. What would you like to know? Well, we were first wondering about the house on Third Street. We can see that it is furnished and rents for $135 a week, but can you tell us how many bedrooms it has? Let's see. In addition to the den, it has three bedrooms. What about the one on Route 9N? It looks like it's big with a library and a deck, but it doesn't say how much it costs or anything else about it. Oh, yes. Mrs. Gaylor's apartment. That one is actually only a 10 month rental and it is going for $156 per week. It's quite a nice place. She only rents for 10 months each year because of horse racing season. Then her relatives all come to stay, so tenants have to move out. It's a little bit inconvenient, but past tenants have really enjoyed their stay there. Oh, well, we need it for a full year. I guess that one is out. How about the rental on Bro and Drive? How many rooms does that one have? As it says on the list, it has two bedrooms and a private kitchen and bath. But it's actually a very small place. That's why it's a bit cheaper. Oh. Well, then, what about the one that has three large rooms? Who is renting that property? That one is a good deal. Mr. John Smith is renting it. But he's quite eccentric and he has a strict rule about no pets. How about cats? Nope, absolutely no pets. Hmm, well then, how about this studio apartment rented by Mr. Bo Jensen? How is that one? That ad is actually a bit deceptive. The studio apartment is the whole upper floor of an older house. It's actually very large and, at $45 a week, quite affordable. And it's near campus. I think I'd like to check that one out. Do you have a telephone number that we can call? It's not on the list? Oh, it isn't. Here it is. 
You should ring area code 518 and then 543 7790. Thanks. I think I'll call on that one first. Your friend decides that he would like to talk to Mr. Bo Jensen. Look at questions 7 to 9. Answer questions 7 to 9. Write no more than three words for each answer. Hello? 1512, Route 9. Yes. Is this Mr. Jensen? Yes, it is. Can I help you? Yeah. We're studying here at university, and we came across the rental information for the studio apartment that you are renting. Is it still available? Yes, of course. I actually just placed the ad, and you're the first person to call. Is there anything you'd like to know about it? Yes, actually, there is. As students, we are on the Internet a lot, and we heard that some homes in the area have high-speed connections. What type of connection do you have there now? Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting first question. But I guess I have heard that too. But we just have a phone line here. Nothing fancy. I think you can have a cable line installed, but it's just a phone line for now. OK. Well, maybe we can do that. What type of heating does the apartment have? Now, there's a more traditional question. We have oil heat here. It's an older house. That tends to be a little more expensive during the winter, right? Yeah, but there's nothing to do about it. It would cost too much for me to put in a gas heater. What else would you like to know about the apartment? Well, we heard it was quite big. Is it furnished? Actually, yes. I should have put that in the ad. It has an old couch and a couple chairs. A dining table, refrigerator, stove, and even a dishwasher. Does it have any beds? Yep, it has two. That sounds great. When is the apartment available? You can have it tomorrow night if you want. I just have to clean up a couple things before you get here. Do you want to come over and see it first? No, it sounds fine to us. I actually know the street too, so I know the area. We'll take it. This is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. Now turn to Section 2. You are going to hear the Director of the Leadership Council give his welcome address at a convention. First look at questions 10 to 14. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 10 to 14. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Please find your seats. Snacks will be available all day long. Thank you. Allow me to first introduce myself. I am Joe Steinke, Director of the Leadership Council. On behalf of the Organizing Committee for the 8th Annual Leadership Conference, I welcome you all to San Dimas, California, for a special session on postmodern solutions. We have people attending from as far away as Toronto, New York, and even the Bahamas. Frankly, I wish we had gone to you there. <laughs> but we're very glad you're all here. Let me say further that this will be our largest conference yet. Registrations have far surpassed our expectations. For the first three days, we will be hosting more than 325 participants for lectures and workshops. Another 100 will be joining us for our final two days and culminating session on Friday evening. We also have a larger selection of seminars than ever, a total of 32. Because we know that you all will want to attend a few special sessions, we will repeat key seminars each day. 
so there will actually be 38 sessions. I'm sure you will all be pleased with the content and the quality of speakers. Now look at questions 15 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 15 to 20. Now, for those who have opted not to take part in our bag lunches, there are a number of places nearby that we can recommend. We are located here in the convention center just across the street from the Harford Shopping Mall, and the place we most recommend is Vital's, which is just west across Queen Street on the opposite corner. Please be careful crossing both streets, however, as we don't want to lose any participants. <laughs> if you're not up to Vital's, you can also get some Italian food at the Olive Garden, which is further down Queen Street and east on Danning Avenue, across from the police station. They have a great minestrone soup and excellent breadsticks, all you can eat. On the other hand, if you want some good old American food, you can head to Fuddruckers for some big hamburgers or to the Cattle Company for some fat, juicy steak. Fuddruckers is next to the Olive Garden, but the Cattle Company is back closer to us in the opposite direction of Vital's. Just go east out of the convention center across King Street. It's on the same side as the convention center, so you just have one street to cross. Enjoy. But also, please make sure you are back for the afternoon sessions. These will always start at 1.30 p.m. That will give you an hour and a half for lunch each day. Sessions will be over each day at 5.30. Now, regarding the schedules we've printed out, there have been a couple of last-minute changes. The session titled New Leadership Strategies will no longer be held in Seminar Room 1, but in the main ballroom. This session has garnered much praise and is highly recommended to all, hence the change to a larger room. Another session has been cancelled. That session was titled Leading by Serving, and it was scheduled for Daniel's room. The speaker for that session Dr. Mark Green had to return home for some urgent health situation. We wish the best to Dr. Green and that all is fine with his family. Finally, the session titled Using the Arts and Media has been changed to the second lounge room, Lounge 2. Please show up promptly for sessions and sit towards the front of each room so that all seats can be utilized. Also, turn off all pagers, beepers, and cell phones. Drinks and snacks will be provided outside each room, but please be careful at your tables. Enjoy the conference. This is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. Now turn to Section 3. In this section, you will hear a discussion between three students, David, Joseph, and Carrie. In the first part of the discussion, they will be talking about lounges in different school buildings on campus. First look at questions 21 to 24. Note the examples that have been done for you. Now listen to the first part of the discussion and answer questions 21 to 24. Complete the table showing the types of seating available and the number of seats in each lounge. Hey, Joseph. Long time no see. How's it going? Oh, hey, David. It's going fine. 
I'm a little overwhelmed with all these new courses, but I'm hanging in there. Have you met my girlfriend, Carrie? No. Hi, Carrie. Hi, David. Joseph told me about you. You two had quite the time last semester in European history, I hear. Yeah, we like to hang out after class. Now it's a little harder, though. Lounges aren't as good as they were back there in Wilson Hall. Yeah, they had chairs, couches, and tables to put your stuff on. And that lounge was full. There must have been 25 seats in there. Really? The lounge in Jones Hall, where I have my communications course, only has about 10 chairs. It's awful. We all just stand around or leave. I wish we could hang out more. Well, Agriculture Hall is next door. Their lounge is on the first floor, and it has couches. I think there are about six of them. And they're comfortable and hardly used at all. That's not a good idea. Thanks. But don't go to lounge at Skidmore Hall. I don't even know why they call it a lounge. It's just four chairs in the corner of the main walkway. In the second part of the discussion, David, Joseph, and Carrie continue talking about conducting a survey. Look at questions 25 to 32 first. As you listen to the discussion, complete the table showing the number of points 1, 2, or 3 awarded to each hall for the quality of its facilities. One has been done as an example. Listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 32. Guys, we should really do something about those lounges. I mean, couldn't we gather signatures and try to get the university to improve some of the facilities? Yeah, that's a great idea. But we can't just say something random like, oh, you need to make the buildings nicer. We should come up with some kind of ranking system and have students rank buildings, how beautiful they are, how nice they are, etc. Well, if we were ranking on a scale of 1 to 3, you all know that I would rank Skidmore Hall a 1. Like I just said, that place is awful. No facilities. The bathrooms are way down in the basement. You're right. But they do have a nice balcony on the third floor. That might increase its value. But you shouldn't rank the architecture. You should rank how nice the building is for students to hang out in. Oh, OK. Then I agree with you. So should we do this? I think it's a great idea. But let's try it ourselves on a couple buildings so that we can work out any bugs in it. I think. Wilson Hall is the best. Sure, but we've already begun. We will give a building one point if it has poor facilities, not enough chairs and no vending machines, that kind of thing. And give a building two points if it is OK or acceptable. We can rank buildings that we really like as having three points. So like Joseph said, I think Wilson Hall is the best. It should have three points for sure. And Skidmore has a one. Now, what other buildings should we rank? How about Merris Hall? No, they're not done with that one yet. But it looks like that will be a good place to hang out. How about Agriculture Hall? You said something about that hall a bit earlier. Oh, yeah. They have that lounge with couches that no one uses. But that might indicate that people don't hang out there for other reasons. They don't have any drink machines. That's why I never go there. Oh. Well, then I think it's an average building. Let's give it the middle ranking. I agree. It could be improved slightly, but it's got a couple of nice features. I like that lounge in that third floor, for example, but the stairs are too short. I always trip when I'm walking up them. This ranking is getting complex. OK, one building we haven't talked about is Canton Hall. What do you guys think of Canton? Is that next to the law building? Yep. It's got this excellent connecting corridor with chairs and desks to relax and work at. The cafeteria there is great too. I think that place is just as good as Wilson. Well, I've only been there once, and didn't know that was what it was called. It was kind of confusing. 
and it's kind of far for me to go, but I liked it, so I'll give it the middle ranking. Two points because it had nice facilities, but a poor and confusing layout. Oh, Joseph, you like Canton Hall? I hate that place. It's so mechanical, cold, and impersonal. The furniture is nice, sure, but it's the last place on campus I would go to. I give it a one. Interesting. Well, let's write this little survey up and start passing it around. I don't have time to type it up. Can you? Sure. I'll do it after my biology class. Should we meet up at Wilson tonight around eight? Sure. No problem. We'll see you then. This is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section four. Now turn to section four. You will hear an extract from a VOA radio program on Australian immigration policies. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-three to forty. Now listen to the first part of the discussion and answer questions thirty-three to thirty-five. Tick the relevant boxes in each column. Immigration Minister Philip Rudock and many of his detractors seem to agree on one issue. In the past, Australia's responses to refugees were generous. Between July first, nineteen forty-nine, and June thirtieth, nineteen fifty. Australia admitted more than ninety thousand refugees for resettlement, many more than in any other financial year in its history. An impressive achievement, indeed. Who were these people? Almost all of them were Europeans from countries such as Britain, France, Germany, and Italy. A small minority also came from China. Nearly all of these refugees were displaced persons who were resettled under the auspices of the International Refugee Organization. Most, other than those from China, were actually invited to join an orderly queue to gain admission to Australia. Even at a time when Australia admitted a comparatively large number of refugees, however, its generosity was self-interested. In the late 1940s, the government was anxious to significantly increase Australia's population. Only when it could not procure a sufficient number of British immigrants did it turn to refugees, mostly European refugees. This became clear when Australia refused refugees from many third-world nations, such as Nigeria, Thailand, and India. While things are a lot different now, the history of resettlement in Australia has not always been so interracial. Now look at questions thirty-six to forty. Now answer questions thirty-six to forty. Write no more than three words for each answer. Australians have historically responded to suffering in faraway places with compassion because of two factors: previous governments and the belief that Australians like to give others a fair go. This wasn't because of a belief that refugees make good immigrants. If a nation wants to increase its population, then it should recruit immigrants on the basis of their skills. Education, state of health, gender, and age, if not cultural background, not because they had to flee their homes. This belief was just because Australians were compassionate towards refugees, and refugees have consistently totaled 36 percent of total immigrants to Australia. In the founding years of this nation, that percentage was much higher. Now, however, the trend is to remove compassion and base immigration policy on hard facts. 
This goes contrary to the compassionate notion that returning a refugee to his country of origin when there is a risk that they might suffer harm is fundamentally wrong. Australia's new realistic approach takes a different approach. This approach thinks an immigrant should have value for the nation. If he or she does not, then they are returned to their homeland. The negative side of this policy was seen recently when a stowaway from the Middle East was returned to his homeland. That government promptly had him executed. Whether or not this Iranian would have made a good immigrant should not have come into the equation. This new conservative policy is tarnishing Australia's reputation overseas. Why not appeal to Australians' patriotic pride by suggesting that their government return to their historic roots and show more compassion to the plight of refugees? This would also perpetuate the idea that the reputation of the nation mattered more than anything else. This is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.